from my earliest childhood, I was it was it was always made clear to me that I was different from other people, and that my lack of speaking the way other people could speak was was bad. The main therapy I've had is hip artists. After he put me in a trance, for the next three or four days after seeing him, I spoke f totally fluently. But after a while, um, it slowly wore off. Stuttering has always really annoyed me because it's made me feel like I'm had a whole, whole person. Like I feel that I'm only half, half a, a person, all because I, I stutter. For right now, I feel I'm speaking more fluently than I have ever spoken in my entire life. It's a very difficult job to speak this way. I'm finding it a pretty tough job to think of what I'm going to say next and yet keep up these total controls in my mouth. I don't ever re remember a time when I didn't stutter, so it was always a part of my life. Speech was everything to me because I couldn't do it as a youngster. I couldn't speak. I literally couldn't get more than a couple of words out before I hit a very severe block and the airflow would just stop and I couldn't express anything. I felt shame because I couldn't speak. I felt shame because people often interpreted it that I was retarded or sometimes they went to the other extreme and said well I was too smart and I was thinking too fast and the my, my thoughts were too fast for my mouth. And they would tell me, especially my parents, would tell me to slow down, slow down, slow down. And all that, that did is just put more fear into me that I had to try to speak properly. That's my most vivid memory, is being called out of class to go to a class for problem children. My name would be called. I'd stand up and I'd walk through the entire class as a child and I'd go to a class which were actually mostly retarded children, as I recall. And there was no other stutter in this class. The only refuge I really had, the, the only things I could speak to, I actually talk out loud to in any fluent manner, were my little pets. Nearly every day I would go into a little corner of my closet. There was a special corner I had because I just loved being in, in the dark and I would take a pet and I would talk to that animal. And that's the only time throughout college where I could actually speak fluently. I could talk a full sentence without having a tremendous block. The animals didn't judge me. The animals had no expectations from me. The animals just let me be as I was. That's, that's what I remember when I was very young. When I started getting older, I started feeling that the animals were like me also, that they didn't have a voice either. Throughout my entire life, one of the, the ways I had reacted to the, w to the way people reacted to me was by getting angry and by say, feeling that I didn't belong in the world of people. I was living in two worlds. I was living in this little world of animals where I knew I was normal inside. I knew I could think the way everybody else could think. I knew I could do everything they could do, in many ways do, them, do it better. But then when I stepped outside of that closet, I had to, to live in the world of people, where I was viewed in so many different ways by so many different people as being too dumb, too smart, thinking too fast, too slow. And as a child, you know, how do you, as an adult, you, you can say, I don't care, this is who I am. But part of how children develop a persona is by seeing themselves 
reflected in the eyes of others, and I didn't know who the hell I was. I would always plan ahead so that I didn't have to speak in class, and once I got caught unaware, I didn't know what to do. I actually did this completely without thinking. As my turn came, as the desk in front of me, the girl in front of me finished reading what she was reading, and my turn had come, I dropped a pencil under the desk, and I reached down, and I jabbed the lead of the pencil with all of my might into the palm of my hand, and I had to be taken to the hospital. And it was incredibly painful, but the pain didn't bother me one bit. The pain didn't bother me one bit because the, 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 the anticipated pain of humiliation, of ridicule, was much worse than the physical pain. Physical pain was nothing.